It's not my first time in a dress standing before a church, but <laughs> hasn't happened a lot, and this is one of the first times it's ever been recorded. Hi, Mom. Um, I'm a newer face here at UBC. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Connor Hollis, and I literally became a member last week. Uh, um, I was baptized Episcopalian. Um, one in a long line of Anglican Episcopalians straight from, like, the motherland. My grandfather is from Bermuda and was a priest in the Church of England. Um, and I was confirmed United Methodist at the age of 13. I left the Methodist Church in 2013 in thought, and in deed, in 2017. I became an Episcopalian again. Since then, my journey through church polity has led me to the Baptist tradition and to University Baptist Church. That polity journey is a story for another day. Um, I am up here because I am a queer Christian. Um, and that is not a bizarre thing in this space, uh, a fact for which I am immensely grateful. See, the last time I gave my testimony about my queer faith journey, it was in that United Methodist Church I was confirmed in. And my presence was, in fact, a bizarre thing in that space. It was one that comforted some, stirred some, and drove others to behave in a deeply unchristian way. But the thing is, the pastor who had taken the helm of my childhood church understood something that I had only begun to understand myself as I wrote that testimony, the concept of the ministry of existence. For queer people, sometimes our mere presence, the fact that we exist, is a form of ministry. And that sounds a little presumptuous when I say it aloud, but in that little church in northern New Jersey, a month after the United Methodist Church had doubled down on its disaffirmation of queer people, the fact that I stood up there at a pulpit and came out did multiple works. In the presence of queer Christians, there is comfort for queer people who have been hurt by the church, and there is hope for a return to a world they thought they were locked out of. In the presence of queer Christians, there is teachings, new ways of looking at our sacred texts and our traditions, new ways of looking at ourselves. In the presence of queer Christians, there is prophecy against bigotry. The assertion that I cannot be a Christian falls apart when I stand up in front of you and proclaim the good news. I consider myself lucky that I never really needed this kind of ministry to heal me. I grew up with affirming parents and clergy grandparents, clergy grandparents, who I trusted so deeply that they were almost the first people I came out to. My mother said she would have been furious if that had been the case. Um, but the truth is, looking back on the faith path it took to be able to come out, I was only able to do that because of queer Christians. There weren't that many to be found at the time. It was 2012, and the internet was uh, even more burgeoning than it was 10 years before, but looking back, it was still archaic. Um, but I found Matthew Vines, who, if you know, God and the Gay Christian, was one of the first big Christian names in queer Christianity. Um, I found the Gay Christian Network, which is now called the Q Christian Fellowship, I actually worked for them for a little bit, for like a hot second, um, and I found friends in a queer youth group that was held in a church run by queer adults. And these people didn't actively reach out to bring me into the fold. They didn't have to actively talk to me about my queerness. It was just their presence, their mere existence that was evidence to me that I could be queer and Christian too. And so that's the only real requirement to the ministry of existence. One must be known as both queer and Christian. A coming out must happen on both fronts. The ministry I speak of requires that we live our lives authentically in Christ. And if I am honest, when I look around at the queer faces in these pews, 
I think we are doing an excellent job. Um, in fact, I think that this practice of queer faith stories is an example of how churches should practice the ministry of existence. Because we, your queer siblings in Christ, have gotten up here and made ourselves known. And that is why I am proud to be the newest queer face in this congregation. Thank you. <laughs>